Today we're going to be looking at some of the uh, artwork of Hoche Anderson. Um, I originally bought these for the Darshan Studios Comic Art Museum and Storytelling Theater, which was housed in uh, the front room of my home in uh, Des Moines, Iowa in the early 2000s, which uh, had a previously been a hair salon. Um, I created a showcase uh, for local artists and my own work, but I also began purchasing uh, other comic art, and one of the big first purchases I made was six pages of Hoche Anderson's King, the comics biography of Martin Luther King, which is probably what he's most well known for. Nowadays, he's working on a comic called Godhead uh, and uh, making a movie, I believe. But uh, I think he broke into the business working for Eros Comics, uh, the erotic comic imprint from Fantagraphics. I became familiar with him from the book Young Hoods in Love, which I, I really do love that book. Um, and, but these are pages from the King biography, actually volume two. And this is page two, which you can read up at the top, was uh, from Labor Day 1995. And uh, it shows uh, King recuperating in the hospital. And what I find interesting is the uh, notes that are on it. And like at the top there in that first panel, he's uh, talking about replacing that image. There's a little pencil uh, note there. And uh, another thing that's very uh, obvious and unique is that he was printing out these, uh, the lettering on this comic and gluing it directly to the board, which is something I did in my early comics as well. Um, I think I got the idea from Mad Magazine. I'm not sure what where uh this comes from but and you can see that there's lines right through lettering so i don't know exactly how this worked in the original edition i'm sure later on there was some uh digital uh manipulation and uh but i i like the fact that these pages have the letters right on the page those starking, stark black silhouette wets and highlight on King's face in the hospital are, is really dramatic, I think. I really love this page. And then for the next page, this is page 20 from the same volume. And that first one was drawn in 95, Labor Day 1995, it was uh, noted. And this one is January 15th, 2001. So I don't know if there was a break in production on the book or whether it just, he worked on it while doing other projects and until it was complete or what, but that's what, six years in between these two pages. And uh, I really like how the tie, Martin Luther King's tie goes through the entire page and on top of the second panel and underneath the third. Um, and the faces of the angry mob on the uh, in the first panel, I think, are really great too. Uh, it, it's like very sim simple, but it captures the emotion very well. And then the dry brush on this section here, where the uh, I believe it's a uh, a. Uh, canister of tear gas that's coming in. I'm not quite sure. It's been a while since I read the book and it's currently uh, in my storage unit in an unopened moving box here in Alaska. But again, I like how 
Here he has um, some uh, Zipatone right on the page, which nowadays in the scanning would be uh, create nothing but uh, weird uh, effects. Uh, now that would be done probably digitally, but this is old school again with the letters uh, pasted right onto the page and uh, Zipatone for the jackets, if you notice in all three panels. Another great page, I believe, uh, from King Volume 2, 20 of 72. So that second volume would have been 72 pages long, I guess. And then I have a, a third page here. And this one is very involved and intricate. Oh, and uh, I forgot on this second page. The interesting thing about that is on the back of it, he drew another page. Or he drew that page on the back of this page, I should say, because this is from Wise Sun, which uh, Wise Sun, the White Wolf miniseries, was published by Milestone Comics. Uh, and uh, so this is an entirely different story, and but he over he reused the same paper to draw this page. I wouldn't even begin to do that. I, I, it's thick paper, so I guess he didn't have to worry about it uh, seeping, being seen through. Well, you can see through it pretty good. But I'd be afraid to draw on the back of a page, but I think it used to be fairly common. Again, here's... Uh, this one was drawn before the last one. This is from March 1999, and it's page 27. And uh, he's got some notes here where he's uh, saying, In the collection, obscure face more. Uh, focus on mouth or headphones, no eyes. And in the top, he's uh, referencing an RCO, RCA logo from an advertising book that he uh, needs for right here on the page. And it looks like he moved the clock a bit as well. So I, I love in comics when they're shown handwriting and uh, writing that's really great lettering there. And I love the outline of the uh, pen and how it becomes part of his hand. On the back of this one, we have some sketches. Big block of black, but am I art? And then there's some pencil sketches there, one in pen, baby, do you love me? And uh, then here he's talking, of, he's got a note about best part of working for Milestone. Uh, I'd have to say the best part about working for Milestone was the free paper. And then he got, writes revision. The best part was actually the money. And then three years old, he circles it and adds another notation. The money ran out ages ago, but the paper's still here and dates it 99. So um, he, this is like a three-part note about working with Milestone. And I guess this was paper that was provided for him when he was drawing Wise Son. I actually used this sketch um, here to advertise the uh, show and I called the show with uh, his artwork but am at art so uh, I got a double dose of Hoche from that one now I've got three other pages from the book 
but they're very different. They're from the same issue, but these are drawn in collaboration with Wilfred Santiago, with whom Hoche also co-produced the series Pop Life later on. And uh, Wilfred is a Wilfred Santiago is a cartoonist in his own right and has done a, recently done a uh, biography of uh, Roberto Clemente. So you might recognize the name from that. But I guess um, Hoche was penciling and uh, got an ink assist from uh, Wilfred Santiago or vice versa. Because the signature is W.S. H C A. So I I know that Hoche talked about how he went back in with a brush and kind of made it look more like his stuff. So I don't know who did what, but that's part of the appeal. It's a uh, true collaboration, and I like how the uh, clock face is uh, left pencil. I think they ended up doing a digital thing there where they put an actual photograph. I'm not sure. I don't really remember for sure. Um, but this is page nine from issue two, and it's in, from November in 2001. Another thing I find interesting about this issue is uh, that he writes in pencil what he's listening to, uh, Jane Bonnet, CD, Spirits of, I can't read that last word, but he. this is obviously what was playing while he was drawing this. This is another page by Oche and Wilfred Santiago. And again, this one, if, as you notice, these three pages that I'm showing now do not have the lettering. Obviously, by this point, lettering was being done digitally entirely. And so you don't get the lettering on the page, which is fairly common in comic pages nowadays. But I miss having the lettering because you really don't know what they're saying or anything. And... Uh, but I can understand the appeal of being able to add the balloons later, but it just seems like something is missing to me. Again, this, these are really great drawings. Uh, you get a lot of emotion in that crowd, in the cross section, and uh, this here is a great drawing. And this will be the final page. And this, obviously, they're on a bus and get uh, attacked by uh, a angry mob. Um, I'm not sure who is depicted here. I don't really see the king figure. So uh, I, I'd ha I wish I had the book handy so I could uh, figure out what's what and what is actually being said. Again, all three of these pages all seem to have come from uh, November in 2001. And he has notes at the top where he's uh, to Wilfred, uh, see script for dialogue. And he also says, uh, hope you can figure out the page. So I'm I'm guessing it was a fairly rough sketch that he presented for Wilford. And again, up there in the corner is Slow Tango, Jane Seabury. So I'm assuming that's what was on the uh, turntable when this was uh, playing or CD player, I guess would probably be the case. And uh, a uh, very interesting uh, drawing once again. I just love uh, Hoche Anderson's artwork. Uh, you can see that he's uh, definitely influenced by uh, Howard, Howard Chaikin, but uh, I, I see a lot of other stuff in there too. This breaking glass here, 
that really captures the moment uh, of panic. Um, and I love how the flying glass comes out of that panel there. Um, I also love the ink spatter. I don't know if he's using a toothbrush or what at that point, but ink spatter is always looks good once printed. But that was, uh, and these pages have nothing on the back neither. So, but you do see that it's a uh, milestone standard format up there in blue. So these are, were all drawn on old milestone, uh, paper that was printed for uh, the Milestone series, which was a, a series of African-American comics, uh, an imprint under DC. Uh, Dwayne McDuffie was uh, pretty much in charge of it, and uh, Icon, uh, Haywire, a couple other series as well. Anyway, I thought this would be interesting to get down on uh, a video and before I put these pages back in storage. Thank you kindly.